uh, that is actually causing uh, uh, the, the increase in unemployment uh, in Nigeria is because we have them that graduates, when, when they leave the university, uh, they, they can't fit into the industry. It's, and that is, that is because the programs are not adjusted. The programs are not in line with what the industries are doing. And so what might happen is they graduate when they leave, they need to be retrained and retrained again. So we looked at it. And so we need to we restructure our programs to meet the industry needs. And so today, uh, by also inviting deliver lecture, so that uh, with that, they, we, we we're able to build the academia to, to, to reduce that gap between the academia and the industry. In ...of Edo State Polytechnic, Usain. When we come back, we are going to be talking about how government and TED Fund have supported the infrastructural and academic development of the Polytechnic. Stay with us. Edo State Polytechnic, Usain, is inviting suitably qualified candidates to its first batch post-duty ME admission screening exercise, scheduled to take place on Tuesday, 15 September 2020, at the Polytechnic's campus, Usain, by 9 a.m. prompt. To be a soft choice can also apply. Visit www.edopoly.edu.ng to register for the application. Candidates are requested to pay a processing fee of 2,000 Naira via the school's website. Programs available any full-time, part-time, and evening programs in the following schools. School of Applied Sciences, School of Business Studies, School of Engineering, School of Environmental Studies, Certificate Courses in Geospatial Information Science, Meteorology, and Climate Change. Students can also apply for HND full-time and part-time programs. Call 0802-560-0623. Sign. Registrar. My name is Esilsa Igaro. I am a pupil of adults. I am full of excitement. I am excited because of the beauty of teachers teach us very well. Our teachers with new techniques and electronics. Listen to this. On the 5th of October 2019, thousands of teachers gathered at the Eagle Square Abuja to honor Governor Godwin Obaseki as their best performing governor. This is because Governor Obaseki's far-reaching and redemptive measures have created the bright environment with the introduction of Edo Basic Education Sector Transformation, Edo Best Program. Under the Edo Best Program, 11,300 teachers have been trained in ICT. 11,300 tabs have been distributed, 891 schools have been covered, 269,000 pupils are benefiting from Edo Best. Liberia, Rwanda, Sierra Leone have visited to adopt the model, while states in Nigeria including Lagos have also visited and are said to adopt the model. Pupils learn three times more of what they used to learn. Edo teachers are the third group of workers in the world to work with Facebook workspace. 1,200,000 instructional materials have been distributed and there is community ownership of schools. Governor Obaseki is changing the people's socioeconomic business with robust basic education in Edo State. <laughs> All right, you're welcome back. Professor Falodu, could you just tell us briefly about the Department of Mass Communication? Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, mass Communication is one of the programs uh, established uh, by the management of the institution just uh, in 2019. Yes. Uh, the department is... Uh, uh, is uh, a flagship program. Uh, first, to establish that department, uh, we looked at uh, so many uh, parameters. Okay. Uh, of course, you know, Polytechnic is uh, actually meant to, the mandate they have is to train uh, medium or middle level manpower. Uh, and so we, look at the, we looked at the industry uh, where you have uh, uh, so for us to actually help the, the state, yes. help Nigeria in producing functional uh, graduates uh, in mass communication. So uh, the program was established. 
And since then, we, the program has uh, been uh, experiencing a lot of uh, uh, positive transformation. Let us talk about the facilities in the, the department. Yeah, the, the, for the depa in the department, we yes. have a, a state of the art and conventional equipment. Uh, we have uh, is well equipped, totally equipped. Uh, we have a television studio. Uh, we have radio studio that is not going now. The construction, is the, I mean, the construction of the, uh, the, st the physical structure is ongoing. Uh, then we have uh, ICT facilities okay. that will enable the students to excel. In fact, that department is fully ICT driven. Uh, you need to visit uh, the department in Edo State Polytechnic and you'll see that the facility we have, uh, most institutions in Nigeria don't have such facility. Mm. Now, uh, the Edo Modular Refinery mm. is on the verge of completion and the operators say that they are liaising with universities and polytechnics in mm. Edo State mm. to build local capacity to operate in the oil and gas sector. Mm. Now, what is your impression of this project and is your school looking at taking advantage of this window? Of, of, of course, of course. Uh, just before, I, just similar to uh, the, the, the issue of a geospatial information science center we yes. have uh, the GI. You, remember, you, you also know that uh, His Excellency, the Governor, has done uh, very well in the area of uh, uh, land mapping, uh, uh, in the area of uh, issuing of a certificate uh, of occupancy. Okay. And so when we looked at that uh, agency, yeah. uh, GIS, uh, so what we did, we, so in our school, we established the Center for Geospatial Information Science. That is because we want to support the state government okay. to produce the map power that is needed. Okay. Uh -huh. So that at any point in time, where, when the issue of technicalities, uh, the potential will be ready to provide the support. And so in the, in the, in the Center for GIS, we have state-of-the-art facilities, we have drones, we have a lot of facilities there. And so we also have a collaboration with uh, uh, NIMET, and indeed the federal government and other uh, agencies. So for the Edo uh, modular refinery, at the Department of Petroleum uh, Engineering in my school, uh, is already working out uh, modalities for collaboration uh, with the uh, state government in that aspect. Because uh, even if you have expatriate that will be working there, but one yeah. day the expatriate definitely will leave. And so it's also good, so we have to set up a structure uh, in place so that we can always have a replacement and we have our students that will go in there and be trained and again we also do uh, the collaboration will also enable our students to go there for their uh, uh, IT training, uh, industrial training, attachment. With that, that will help to uh, uh, also support the students in terms of, uh, 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 in terms of sound uh, academic uh, uh, learning. So, but Looking at the, 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 the program, Edo Modular, one is going to create a lot of jobs. That is number one. A lot of jobs for the Edo indigenous is going to create a lot of jobs. And secondly, it will help to boost the industrialization concept of His Excellency. Oh, yes, the state will be highly industrialized. And that is what we actually need. Because government alone cannot solve the problem, cannot solve the, yes. So we need such uh, wonderful ideas. And so what we're also going to do with the Edo Modular Refinery, my school, Edo State Polytechnic, because we have that Department of Petroleum uh, Engineering, so we're going to set up a structure that will, that will also provide a kind of advisory role to them. Because, you see, for example, we know the structure of the state. We know in terms of the chemical composition. We know, we know it very well. And so if there are certain uh, ideas that need to be pushed out to them, the school will also provide such information. And so when, we, when you have such collaboration between the industry and the academia, you discover that the students will benefit, then our faculty, that means the lecturers, will also visit the Edo Modular Fly, also to, to acquire more knowledge, practical knowledge, practical exposition. In so doing, uh, the, 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 the state will be producing functional and quality graduates. Thank you very much. Thank now, you. 
How has the state government and TED Fund supported the infrastructure and academic development of the institution? First, the state government has uh, done very well in providing uh, uh, infrastructure in the institution. Uh, when you go to the polytechnic, you see uh, uh, a lot of uh, structures yeah. uh, that are being executed by the state government. Okay. For example, we have the CBT uh, center uh, fully equipped with uh, ICT facilities, state-of-the-art ICT facilities. It fully uh, uh, it was done by the C4 project and by the state government. Uh, then you also have the administrative building. We have a lot of we have lecture theaters. Uh, it's, uh, and all these because of uh, the the His Excellency actually believe that. Uh, Polytechnic education, technical and vocational education is very critical to national development. Then the support of the tech fund is also very massive. Uh, I will tell you that uh, for the past uh, two years, we have uh, had a lot of massive uh, transformation in the geographical landscape of the institution. Uh, for now, we have over, over nine projects completed and about three they are ongoing yeah. for example we have workshops engineering workshop mechanical electrical civil uh, petroleum uh, they are ongoing then we, we, we also have a, a, a state-of-the-art um, ultra modern library then we now also have twin lecture theaters and all these projects are ongoing uh, so the about nine projects have been fully completed and uh, three of them have been commissioned by the federal government. The school recently engaged some international faculties to drive its internationalization. Yep. Now, I know you have touched a little bit of that, but why was this done and what has been the result so far? Okay, the, the, the idea of uh, internationalization is to uh, it will enhance uh, cross fertilization of ideas uh, between uh, foreign faculty and our own faculty. Okay. Uh, and that, you know, will, uh, will bring uh, uh, more innovation uh, and also to bring in more uh, uh, sound ideas. That I tell you this, for example. Uh, uh, we have invited, uh, we had a uh, foreign scholar from Switzerland, a software engineer. Uh, he was in the institution uh, for about a month and he had very good interaction with the faculty and the students. Immediately after that training, the students of the Polytechnic were able to develop the app which we presently use to carry out a lot of academic and administrative activities today. So, of course, the impact of foreign scholars in the institution is tremendous. Then, the area of uh, environmental, for example, we have uh, the foreign scholars we have in the institution, we have presently over 11 foreign scholars from outside. And all these scholars, they are carrying out their job effectively pro bono, I can tell you. Because they also believe that uh, to support institutions like Edo State Polytechnic, is supporting humanity, in developing humanity. And some of them are also scholars, uh, for, uh, scholars that are from Edo State. And so they also believe that for them to also contribute to the advancement of the state, they have to also uh, give, something. give something in return. And so, and, and it's uh, working well for us. So in the area, for example, I was going to, we have uh, Dr. Agui uh, from Germany is, uh, in the area of urban and regional development. Uh, of course, that is an area that uh, uh, His Excellency is also passionate about. Uh, I know uh, we already have uh, uh, the details. Uh, the state government wants to build, uh, to have a, a kind of a, a regional hub for urban and regional development. You are, recently, we had a, a meeting with uh, a, a very robust uh, meeting with uh, uh, some uh, foreign uh, uh, expatriates and we were uh, in the area of urban and regional development and even with the state government. So, we carry out some training. And uh, so, the faculties from outside have actually contributed uh, greatly in the advancement of the institution. 
All right. If you want to reach us, you can um, send SMS or WhatsApp message to uh, phone 0905 And then when we come back, we're going to be talking about why the Polytechnic was in the news recently. Stay with us. My name is Nosayaba Wellington, a teacher at Government Science and Technical College, Bidding City. Since I have been in this school, I have never witnessed such massive government intervention. In fact, there is no word to describe this extraordinary infrastructural development that is ongoing in this institution. This of a conducive atmosphere for teaching and learning and as a teacher I have no choice than to put in my best to reciprocate government huge investment now this kind of school nine them they see for Budo Ibo this now I not a beg me quick clap for governor governor now the consultant citizens of Edo state now I sponsor this message We may just be able to take one or two calls, so you can call us on 0905-170-2571. Prof has uh, graciously agreed to talk to one or two people, but just in case you cannot reach him on the phone, you can send the SMS to 0905-170-2571, or you send the whatsapp message now um, prof it was in the news recently that the edo polytechnic secured an international grant for research on stem from the canadian government how were you able to pull this off and what are the prospects for attracting more international grants for research uh, thank you for that uh, question uh, yes edo state polytechnic won a, a canadian grant uh, recently uh, First, to secure that grant, first, when I was uh, appointed by His Excellency in 2018, the first workshop uh, I organized was grantmanship workshop. Grantmanship. I had a grantmanship clinic. Call it a grantmanship clinic. Mm, what what it means about? is that uh, uh, you train the people on how to write and develop winning proposals. Uh, both from within and outside the country. Okay. And so I had, uh, I'm from the university. I strongly believe that for institution to assay, uh, faculty members should be uh, aggressively, aggressively involved in writing proposals to attract grants to institution. But unfortunately, what happened? What is uh, what, hap what is is lacking uh, because uh, uh, people are not taught, and uh, and apart from that, uh, people are not interested. There are a lot of funds that are available, uh, both uh, from uh, uh, multilateral funding agency, bilateral funding agencies, and these funds are available. It's approved. Then you will be given the fund to execute. The, pro, the proposal or the project in the proposal. So when I got to the school, I observed that uh, it was, uh, I needed to organize the program so that the staff, the academic staff there would be well positioned okay. to attract grants to the institution. And so by the grace of God, uh, not just this uh, Canadian grant, we also won the Ted Fund grants, highly competitive oh, yeah. national uh, concept, yes highly competitive research fund. We submitted concept notes. Two of our concept notes were positive. And so for the Canadian STEM grant research, what actually happened is that uh, we saw a call for proposal. And so I also established, I told you earlier on that I established the Center for Gender Studies. 
that, program, that candidate grant is actually meant to address uh, the issue of gender violence. And so uh, I put up a theme, and that team uh, was able to submit a proposal. And uh, just a few months ago, uh, it, the announcement was made that uh, a dope state polytechnic, indeed, the first polytechnic in Nigeria that has attracted such a grant to an institution. So you can see the transformation uh, of the polytechnic just because the leadership of the institution is drawing strength from His Excellency, the governor of Edo State. Because I also believe in him, uh, because uh, when you are with His Excellency just for five minutes yeah. in the area, in the area, for example, of grantmanship, yes. you will be taught, he will, you know, he will actually impact on you positively because he, be, he also believes in attracting grants. And so we are going to be flying. We have written a series of proposals to different funding agencies, especially international funding agencies, because uh, international funding agencies have a lot of funds, especially for the developing countries. Uh -huh. So these funds we are going to attract to build infrastructure in the polytechnic. And so my school, Edo Poly, is well positioned in attracting more grants to the institution. Thank you. Yeah. Now, what is the status of um, the academic research and uh, what is it that you are doing to promote more applied, more applied research as well as industry input in your programs? Yeah, th thank you. Well, to, to what we have been doing, uh, we actually first we, we, ha we, we put in place a series of uh, workshops, capacity building. First, the mind that is going to carry out uh, research must be well positioned because there are there are guidelines for executing excellent research and so we organize series of workshops to train this ac academic staff in particular so that they can actually map a strategy to to carry out execute research mm. one of such uh, programs we actually organize that uh, we brought people from the industry we brought people from the academia. And so we had to look at the problems, the challenges. So how do we solve the problems? How do we contribute to our society? And so lecturers, faculty were exposed to these issues. For example, I can tell you, we, we look at, uh, we have vast area of land, you know, uh, initially, they were covered with a lot of uh, grasses or weeds. So, the idea is how do you develop, for example, a machine, a robot, that will go out to the field and clear the grasses and go back when the feed is okay, but grasses have taken over the field too. And therefore, we looked at it what do we do? So, in the area of artificial intelligence and robotics, so, uh, yes, so I have to put up a team from engineering. ICT, so we establish the Center for Artificial Intelligence and Robotics. Right now, the, the faculty and students, they are working on it. How do you develop a robot? Because that one will save, a lot of, will save us a lot of money for cleaning grasses, diesel, the, even the manpower involved. So the, the, uh, this idea, uh, well, I'm just giving it out. It's not supposed to, because uh, we have uh, intellectual property that is still, uh, so, so, but I will just stop at that stage. But yeah. you see, the other area is for you to execute good research, you also have to know the ethics. And so, ethics of the ethics of research. So, we, we have to invite also because you have to train and retrain very fundamental, which is lacking in most of our institutions today. People are not trained. And so, we, in ethics, how do, you, how do you carry a fine research? How do you carry a research that will impact positively on the community? So we look at it and say, okay, in our environment, for example, one of the major problems that we have is power. Power. And so a research group was formed, and that research group, the mandate is to develop alternative sources to power. And so right now, in the in guest hostel, uh, in the main hostel, they have been able to ins uh, install solar power developed by the staff of the institution. So that is applied research. 
We have to develop something that will solve. Yeah, if you go there now, yeah, develop by then. We so have to, they have power now in the hostel? We have power in the hostel, 247. So if not because of the, the guest hostel. If the guest hostel and the main hostel. If not because of the COVID, we that world wanted to, to extend it to other areas. The admin block and the lecture theaters. If you do that, and by the time we are through with that, you just discover that even the students, they will not be more interested in working with the faculty. Because, you see, we have a lot of challenges in Nigeria where we can have breakthrough by faculty. But what happened? There are people are blindfolded. Uh, I'm sorry to say this because a lot of us don't, uh, are not involved in training and retraining. And so the, mind, the, 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 the mindset is being narrowed. And so what happens is that they go in there, it's just to copy and paste. But when we are able to carry out research that will affect the environment where we live, then of course there will be a transformation of the environment. What we're also looking at is the, the roads, internal roads in the campus, they are not tied. So, but we are looking at a situation whereby the Department of Mineral Resources Engineering, we're already working at a modality. As a matter of fact, we have laid all the caps, the students and the faculty, as part of their research, laid all the caps. So we're we are trying to see what we'll do now to produce our own asphalt. I to say we can have a, a, a road that is completely asphalted. So that is what we are looking at. So we have to solve our, So the other area we are also looking at is providing water to the community. Because to sink a borehole in Use will cost you up to about 3 million naira. Because, you need to because of the dead, the dead profile and the nature of the, of the environment. And so we have, a, a, we have a river that is not too far from the polytechnic. So we are trying to see the Department of Engineering, Mechanical and Electrical Engineering. It's a teamwork. They are coming up how to construct, how to build a, a dam. As a matter of fact, we have submitted this proposal to Ted Fund for funding. Because you see in the polytechnic, polytechnic structure is actually to develop Nigeria. Because in the polytechnic, we have 70% practical and 30% theory. But over the years, this fundamental truth was abandoned. And so you now have institutions that are running theory of practicals. Okay. And so because of that, faculty cannot bring out the best in them. We have a call coming in. Yes, thank you. Hello? Hello, good morning. Morning, how are you? Very fine, thank you. Thanks for calling on the program. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, I was up here, Mr. Uh, yes, your name, please. And where are you calling from, sir? My, my name is Mr. Piotr. I'm calling from Zamfara State. You're calling from Zamfara State? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm here in the district, sir. Then, I'm a district member. But, we... Okay. The reason why, uh, the reason why we need to go, we take the same, we people, we have 50% trained for, I want to have a better, I know, I just want to come here for the program, because I know, I know, I know the thing. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. What, any, any he question? says he's just welcoming you to the okay, program. Okay. He doesn't speak too much English. He's calling from Zamfara <laughs> State. He's okay, watching sorry. it <laughs> and uh, he's just trying to say hello to you. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Yes. I'll call her from Zamfara. Yeah. All right. Now, um, um, you, you were a former deputy vice chancellor at the University of Benin. Yes. Now, you agree that there has always been this disparity between the polytechnic and the university degree. Now, how did you feel leaving the university environment and then moving to the polytechnic environment? Yeah, th thank you so yes. much. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, well, I'm still in the university. I'm on leave of absence. Okay. And leave of absence to the state polytechnic. Okay. Which means that when I leave, I'll go back to the university. To the university. Yes. Uh, uh, first, I want to say that... Uh, no, I actually want you to address the, the this dichotomy. Issue the, yes, yes, the, the dichotomy or the disparity mm -hmm. between the polytechnic education um, and uh, the university education. Yes. Uh, well, from the university uh, point of view, as a, uh, as a staff of the university, I will say that the polytechnic has a love in terms of 
providing practicals, expository practical utilization. What I mean is this. You want to pause a little. Let's take this call from okay. outside the country. Yeah. Hello. Good morning, sir. Where are you calling from, please? I'm calling from Germany. Good morning, sir. Your name, sir? Yeah, my name is Fred. Okay. Yeah, uh, I just dropped a message for you now. Please, can you read the message and then you get back to me? Because you see, it's not public talk. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, just read the message. Just read the message, you get back to me. Please. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Thank yeah. You. Okay. Okay. I yeah, will go back to it. his message. Uh, read it. Uh, okay, yeah, tell me. <laughs> that can provide Let's it. see. Let's see. He says, it's, well, according to him, it's not public talk. That is what he says. I don't know. I can't really see the message. I think it's a voice note he dropped. Okay. Okay. Now, let's talk about this disparity. Okay. This disparity that, dispar that you're talking did, about. Did, yeah. This disparity. Uh, yes. Uh, is has been there for uh, for many years now, yeah. and uh, but uh, I know it's because of uh, the administrative structure okay. uh, laid down by the government, yes. both at the state and the federal okay. level. Uh, because uh, if you look at it, when uh, an HND order is entering the civil service, uh, you have the university graduate entering the civil service. They will enter a different structure, uh, which actually created that disparity. Yeah. But you know that in the Polytechnic, we have sound graduates. I remember many years ago, uh, our chief Polytechnic graduates in accounting, graduates, accounting graduates from our chief Polytechnic, very sound. Industries, we're looking for them. Are you getting it? So, yes. And if you also look at, so the disparity that is coming up is, uh, at, although recently the federal government has been able to remove it and say, yeah, by certain uh, secular or whatever, yeah. But I think that for us to... But you and I know that, yes, yes the federal government removing it yeah. is one thing, but trying to convince the employer is another thing. Yes, yes. but you see, for us to develop as a nation technologically, yes. we need the polytechnic. Okay. Because if you get to the polytechnic, you see a lot of facilities used for practical, to train the children, to train the students. But in the university, in the university, I'm sorry to say, yes. most of the practicals they are now conducted via what we call alternative to practical. And so what happens is that you have graduates coming out from that end. When they get to the industry, they cannot fit in. I can tell you, for example, in my school, Edo State Polytechnic, yes. we have about eight atomic uh, AAS, atomic absorption spectrophotometer. We have a functional gas liquid chromatography. We have over 12 flame photometers. All these equipment I've just mentioned, I've just mentioned now. Yes. There are federal universities that you cannot see one. Okay. Just one functional flame photometer or even AAS. So when you get to the polytechnic, to the, get to the polytechnic you see facilities that can be used to train students. So but what I'm trying to do uh, is like I'm bridging the gap now. I'm from the university, I'm in the polytechnic. If I had discussed this with the stakeholders at the federal level. Okay, we have a call from the United Kingdom. Okay. You want to take it? Okay. Hello? 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 Good morning, sir. Yes. May we meet you, please? Your name? Dr. Okoji. Yes. Okay. Yes. Talk to us. The prof is listening. Yeah. He says he never knew that there was a functional polytechnic, okay, so he's yes. commending the governor. Yes. Yeah, I'm not that there's a 
You can hear him. So I followed the programs from the beginning. From what I've heard, I think the SNRC and the prof there, they've done a, a nice work. Okay. So my, uh, my question is this. What are they doing? What are they doing to bring more, to attract more foreign uh, to, to, uh, to become a partner? Thank you. So it says, what are you doing to bring in more people to come and partner with your institution? Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. He I said that after commending the, yes, uh, the work yes. that uh, thank, uh, thank, uh, the governor yes. is doing in Edo State. Yes, thank, yes. You, thank you for the commendation. Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, before I was appointed, the Polytechnic was not known. Mm. Uh, and that was what actually informed His Excellency to uh, change the name. Uh, uh, to Edo State Polytechnic. Okay. It used to be Edo State Institute of Technology and Management. Okay. Uh, in the area of bringing in more development, uh, what we are doing is that by engaging qualified foreign faculty, that is one, yes, one aspect where if we observe, if we are able to get foreign faculties uh, in some areas that we think we are deficient in, yeah. so we engage the foreign faculty. Then secondly, we are also looking at industries, industries, both abroad and in Nigeria, to partner with, so that we can bridge that gap between the academia and the industry. Okay. Then the other area in terms of funding, funding is at three different levels, both the state, the national, and the, the, the foreign uh, funding from uh, different funding agencies. As I've said before, we are developed, we are writing more winning proposals uh, so that we can attract more grants. We are also reaching out to government at the federal and at the state level to, uh, to, to support us in terms of funding. For example, I just, uh, in terms of uh, at the federal level, just recently, with the support of His Excellency, we were able to attract a weather station equipment to the school. A weather station equipment. So, which is being used by uh, weather station, uh, by the airport, by farmers, to plan, so that they can they can actually know the exact they have a kind of accurate and precise uh, uh, weather information for their planting, and so and that is one of the ways we are we are actually reaching out to corporate uh, uh, organizations. And you say so, that with that equipment, they can forecast the weather. Oh, uh, absolutely. Accurately. Absolutely. And that it has been installed in the Do State Polytechnic, and so we, we, we're also taking up from there. We are starting a program, a diploma program, in the meteorology and climate change. Okay. It will be the first polytechnic in Nigeria to st to have that program. The program is already on registration; is already on, in collaboration with NIMET, so that we will also be producing graduates for NIMET. And so we are on with that. So, and His Excellency is giving us uh, wonderful support in that aspect. Okay. Yeah. Now, what would you have to say to parents who are undecisive about sending their children to the Edo State Polytechnic? In fact, uh, Edo State Polytechnic is one of the best in Nigeria, the fifth best in Nigeria. So, uh, my advice is that they should send their children, their wards to the Polytechnic. The Polytechnic has the facility to train the children. And apart from that, we have, a, we have zero tolerance for courtesy, or that social vices. The environment is conducive for learning. We have conducive hostels. We have state-of-the-art facilities. That I must tell you, one of the changes that His Excellency introduced, the tuition field of that institution used to be 125,000 Naira, but now it has been brought to 55,000 Naira because the governor wants a lot of people to have access to quality and functional education. That 55,000 Naira, is it for a session or is it for a term? That is for a section. For one year? It's for one year. Okay. For one year. Okay. Because the, the institution is not added to make profit. But it will train, yes, the mandate is to train quality and functional manpower. And so that's why you can see the, the children of the, the poor, they can have access to the institution today. 
So briefly, Prof, what yes. three key projects would you say are sufficient enough to secure the governor the second term in office? Just the briefly, three. Yeah, uh, well, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a done deal. The governor coming back is, uh, it has already been approved uh, by the people because the government of His Excellency is about the people. And when you go, when you go to the streets, people will tell you they want the governor back again. And that is because it's touching lives. It's touching, it's affecting the people positively. And so for His Excellency, which we also agree, the Obaseki is a movement now. It's an institution. And so a, a lot of persons, the Nigerians, Edolites, they are anxiously waiting for September 19 to vote him back again to be governor of Edo State. And so in the area of building more infrastructure, more infrastructure, more roads, more uh, uh, funding for the schools, tertiary institution, and building excellent, excellent infrastructure at the secondary school level because they have started it with the primary and so the secondary, then the tertiary. Okay. And with the peace that we enjoy in those states, the second coming by the grace of God is guaranteed. Thank you very much, Professor. All right, we'll take our last break now. Or we'll come back. We'll go to our page to take just one or two comments. Stay with Thank us. You. My name is Okira Inmokwede. This is my Dubai story. Prior to 2018, I was a classroom teacher in Obo Oduma Primary School in the Yewe, Onwa East Local Government area in Edo State. In 2018, I went to attend the pilot phase training of the Edo Best Digital Teachers Training in Benin. And I want to use my t-shirt to tell my story. This was a t-shirt I was given when I was trained to become a digital teacher in 2018. You can see it's written, I'm a digital teacher, not an analog teacher. Shortly after, I attended the training to become a learning and development officer. And this is the t-shirt I was given where I was supporting teachers in school. This is the t-shirt. Few months after, I was promoted to Subeb to become an instructional oversight officer in quality assurance department, like providing critical data for decision making where I use, uh, I do data analysis using Excel, Google Sheets. I, I've gone for different trainings uh, and it's been a very interesting journey so far from a classroom teacher in 2018, prior 2018, that had no experience in when it comes to using of the computer, using how to provide, how to do data analysis. In a space of two years, uh, the governor Obaseki led administration and uh, the suburb led by Dr. John Osavalwe have given me the opportunity, they've trained me, equipped me, and uh, given me the opportunity to continue to support our teachers in schools, ensuring that. Uh, effective teaching and learning is taking place in all primary schools in Edo State, ensuring that every Edo child is learning in Edo State. And this is my Edo best story. You're welcome back Thank to you. our page segment. Now let's go to our page to see what has been happening. Yeah. Prof, you know, it's the first time on the program, but I wouldn't know if you have been watching. Usually we go to the page to take uh, mainly the negative comments yes. and questions, but where there is none, we just uh, read out uh, the positive uh, comments. Okay. So let's see. This is coming from Gregory Thomas. Uh, well, it's a positive comment because I've not seen any question or a negative one. He says, um, a do polytechnic Usen is ranked among the fifth yes. in the federation. Okay. And this one is coming from Matthew Amadasu. 
No, not Marty or Marjasu now. No, there's another one. Okay. Uh, Gregory. Okay, the same Gregory Thomas. Okay. It says, um, this man is grounded in institutional workings, and that is for you. Okay. And uh, Bobby or Bayouana says, this man is very sound and a blessing to a do state. Congratulations Thank to you. you. So most of Thank the comments are for you, and of course, the way you deliver them your answers to the interview. So we'd like to say a big thank you to Professor Abiodun Falodun, Director of Edo State Polytechnic, Usain, for thank coming you. on the program. Thank you. Thank you My so pleasure. very much. Thank you. All right. And we also like to thank most of uh, the callers, those that sent in their comments, and most importantly, the viewers. You are the reasons that we are here. You know, so we thank you so very much thank for you. watching. And of course, our discussion today has been pure academic. And we're talking about repositioning education by starting from the very basics. On behalf of everybody that has contributed to this program from the background, my name is Habiba Oyege Oyarekwa. Good afternoon. Edo State Polytechnic Osen is inviting suitably qualified candidates to its first batch post duty ME admission screening exercise, scheduled to take place on Tuesday, 15 September 2020, at the Polytechnic's campus, Osen, by 9 a.m. prompt. To be eligible to apply, candidates must have scored 120 and above in the current dam and must possess five credits in not more than two sittings. Candidates who do not choose the Polytechnic as first choice can also apply. Visit www.edopoly.edu.ng to register for the application. Candidates are requested to pay a processing fee of 2,000 Naira via the school's website. Programs available any full-time, part-time, and evening programs in the following schools. School of Applied Sciences, School of Business Studies, School of Engineering, School of Environmental Studies, Certificate Courses in Geospatial Information Science, Meteorology, and Climate Change. Students can also apply for HND full-time and part-time programs. Call 0802-560-0623. Signed, Registrar.